This video builds on the set of resources on margins and in particular lead compensation but provides an interactive interface where students can investigate aeroplane role. So the aim here is to show that the use of lead compensation in a simple aerospace scenario. An aeroplane roll angle is to be controlled so you can see we've got our sort of dummy aeroplane over here and the roll angle is this angle in here. So you're not straight and level, you're rolled at an angle theta. Now the underlying dynamics include a double integrator and thus are challenging. So in general, plants with unstable or close to unstable dynamics benefit from some lead compensation. And therefore what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we might use lead compensation to improve the control of rolled angle. Now the roll angle can be approximated by a model of the following form. So you'll see we've got the double integrator there, so C over S squared, S plus A. And if you look at the bowed diagrams, you'll notice a key problem. The phase never goes above minus 180 degrees, so it's not possible to get a positive phase margin and here you'll see the default phase margin minus 70 degrees so you're saying we have a problem how are we going to get a positive phase margin well the only way to get a positive phase margin is you're going to have to deviate your phase plot up a bit like this so here I've moved the phase plot up and of course how do you move the phase up you need a lead so you can see if we choose a lead which gives you a phase uplift in this sort of region here, then we can get a positive phase margin. So that's what we're going to do. So the user must choose a desired gain crossover frequency omega and what phase margin they want to achieve. And we're going to use this definition of a lead. You'll see it's got a gain K lead and then it's got a frequency omega which we put in there and then it's got this R, and R basically tells you how much phase uplift you're going to get from your lead. And we won't discuss that in detail because that's covered obviously in the earlier resources on the lead. The parameters K lead, omega and R are fixed from the requirements that we're giving here. So the requirements, we're fixing the gain crossover frequency and we're fixing the phase margin. The GUI allows users to choose whatever compensator values they want within limits. So the idea is you can do some root loci design or some bow plot design, however you like, and then you can put in the parameters that you want. So the GUI allows you to enter K, Omega and R. So you can choose those however you want. The comments on lead design. For this scenario, the maximum reasonable phase margin that can be achieved is about 40 degrees. So that will have been obvious from the phase plot we showed and the fact that the maximum uplift you can get from a lead is about 55 degrees. Users will note that larger target phase margins will result in smaller crossover frequencies, so slower responses. So you're going to have to deal with a trade-off here are you prepared to accept a lower phase margin to get a faster response? Or do you want a bigger phase margin, but a slower response? Large values of R can result in aggressive actuation, and the GUI isn't going to look at that, but it's something that you should be aware of. Now, students are encouraged to explore different designs and make their own conclusions. And the key point here, for those who aren't familiar with it, there is no such thing as a best design. They have different pros and cons, and you have to argue, these are my requirements, this is what I want, this is why. So running the GUI. Ensure you have the P code file and the FIG file, you need two for the GUI, and type the name in the relevant folder. So here I've put mine in the folder Aeroplane Roll, and you can see the file name is Aeroplane Roll GUI. The roll demand is fixed at 0.5 radians, just to keep the GUI interface slightly simpler. So this is what the GUI interface looks like. So you'll notice, first of all, you can choose the two model parameters. So you can change the model parameters in order to investigate different dynamics, different frequency ranges. So here you put in C and you can put in A because those are the main parameters. And then these next three buttons are the lead parameters. You'll see the frequency omega, the ratio of the pole to zero R and the compensator gain. Okay, so there's five different things 
that you can choose. And you get a number of plots to help you see what's going on. So you can see the closed loop set response down here. You'll see an animation of the aeroplane down here. You can see the root loci and these stars are where the closed loop poles are. So you can see where the closed loop poles have moved with your new gain. And then over here, that should say G, you can see the open loop and the closed loop bow plots along with the phase margin and the gain crossover frequency with the lead compensator applied. So let's go to this GUI and have a look. So there's the GUI. So what we can do is run the simulation. This big box here says run the simulation. So if I run it and you can see, are you happy with that sort of behavior? So the aeroplane is oscillating quite a bit and you might say, well, I'm not sure if I'm happy or not. OK, there you can see that you can see the oscillation oscillates a lot. And here you can see what we've got, a phase margin of 14 degrees at a gain crossover frequency of 0 0.027. So the phase margin is being calculated over, if it'll let me draw it, over here somewhere. And you might say, well, that's not, not really what I want. Maybe I want my gain crossover frequency to be nearer over here. So is the problem the ratio of my pole to zero? Is the problem my gain? Well, you've got to choose. I'm not going to tell you the answer here because the idea is that you investigate. But look, I could say, all right, look, what happens if I change the ratio from to eight? OK. Update the Bowden loci, press here. Now, the phase margin has now gone to 25. The gain crossover frequency has gone to 0 0.025. Is that better? Is that worse? Well, I'm not going to tell you. You have to decide. What about the compensator gain? What if I make that slightly bigger? Is that a good idea or a bad idea? Now, the phase margin has gone down to 9. OK, gain crossover frequency is now 0 0.03. So maybe I've gone the wrong way. Let's try 0 0.05. Okay. Now I'm not being particularly systematic here because the idea is that you can enter these values, you can use these plots, and you have got to make the choice for yourself. So if I run with my new one, hopefully now the phase margin is a bit better, you'll see there's slightly less oscillation and it behaves a little bit better. OK, so that is better. What if I change the model numerator? So the gain, instead of being 0 0.01, is now 0 0.03. And now I run. And you'll see, of course, because I've changed the plane, that lead compensator is no longer a particularly good one. And if I update the bode and the root loci, again, you'll see that I've no longer got good margins. So the idea is you've got an interface that you can investigate lead compensation, you can change different parameters, and hopefully you can get an understanding. So in conclusions, students should understand the impact of lead compensation on closed loop performance, recognize that in general we can reduce oscillation and speed up responses with a lead. And the best design is not fixed as there are trade-offs with input activity, speed of response, overshoot and so forth.